Fafoy. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Tēnā koe. And uh, can I also join other members in this House who have paid, um, acknowledged the unveiling of the commemorative plaques that now adorn our House, um, uh, and also uh, obviously acknowledge uh, the uh, service that the men and the women of our Defence Force and Police Force have had in those three theatres, and obviously paid tribute to those who uh, paid the ultimate price uh, uh, in those areas, and also to their families, uh, some of whom were here. Uh, earlier tonight uh, for the unveiling. Uh, Mr Speaker, as um, has been said by two of our previous speakers, um, um, speakers on this uh, bill or on this uh, motion, uh, the Labour Party will not be supporting this motion to truncate uh, the select committee process. Um, the, the, the process around this bill actually started quite uh, well before it got to this House. Um, this um, discussion document was put out uh, to the industry uh, by MyB and it's dated February uh, 2013 and there was a, a, a relatively good pe period of time where uh, those who wanted to uh, have their say got to have their say as part of the review re document. But the process went horribly wrong today when one minute before we started debating this piece of legislation we got to see the legislation. Uh, and uh, then the process got even worse, Mr Speaker, when the minister in charge of the bill said he wanted to truncate the period of which uh, the public and members of this industry will have the time to give their um, submissions to the bill and also for parliamentarians to scrutinise the details of this bill. Uh, another member on, on this side of the House, I think it was David Parker, said this is a relatively simple bill. And uh, reading it, uh, we certainly would agree with that, and that's why we have agreed to support it to the Select Committee. Um, but we are not going to support it uh, for this referral motion, um, because while it might be a simple bill, the process does, that does not mean that the process can be thrown to the wind. The process cannot be thrown to the wind, so you can uh, start playing around with the um, time for the report back and also when uh, the, the select committee uh, can sit. Um, because at the moment, the um, minister would like uh, this bill to be reported back on the 16th of August, which is slightly shorter than the usual time. Um, but also, he wants uh, permission for the select committee uh, to sit when uh, the House is sitting and also sit on Fridays. And we question the need for a, such a simple bill, uh, a bill that we have only seen for the last maybe two or three hours, uh, to go through that select committee process um, uh, and not receive the scrutiny that other bills uh, would have received. Uh, Mr Speaker, this is uh, becoming a growing trend with the government. I understand that the telecommunications bill that is also going through the Law and Order Select Committee, uh, that uh, bill was also uh, um, the government asked to truncate that process. Uh, and that is uh, anti-democratic and not giving enough time for those people who want to come and give their submissions uh, on uh, those bills the right amount of time to come and have their say and for parliamentarians to have that extra scrutiny. Now, two very different bills. Uh, one um, really does change uh, the way that the government can access uh, telecommunications uh, companies and the information that they have. Um, and this one is simply looking at the... Um, uh, changing the way that uh, parallel imports and the ban of parallel imports uh, are administered here in New Zealand. But the government is using the same uh, roughshod process to try and get things through quickly. And, 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 and also, I failed to mention that the House is under urgency uh, and, the, and this bill has been uh, introduced. Uh, 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 Craig Foss, the Honourable Craig Foss, is the Minister in charge of this bill. I thought he might have learnt his lesson with Nova Pay. Just to tie home a little bit, don't rush things too much. Don't rush things too much because if you rush things, you can find things get bungled. And that certainly was the case with Mr Foss's experience with Novapay. And, sorry, uh, and so we don't want that to be the experience with this bill, Mr Chair. Uh, we don't, certainly don't want that to be the experience with what he wants to do with this bill, to have it reported back earlier than what would usually be the practice and also to change the way in which this uh, bill uh, is considered by the select committee. So um, I'd like to borrow some words from Gareth Hughes. Uh, this is a shocking process of what we've seen in the last two or three hours. Uh, it is a simple bill, but we don't need to see it um, treated this way through uh, what the government hopes to do through the select committee process. Uh, I do hope that um, maybe um, some people who own the 120 cinemas around the country will be able to make some submissions uh, during this uh, shortened select committee if, uh, process if the government gets its way. Uh, Dick Weary, um, the owner of the Lighthouse in Patoni and also the Lighthouse in Pauta Hanui. Uh, 
and the Lighthouse in, in Central Wellington would certainly be one of those people who would like to submit on this, uh, on this process. Thank you very much for those exact details. Uh, to, um, because he, is, he certainly is uh, someone who's showing movies uh, that, um, if there were parallel imports of those movies, would have an issue with that because of the competition that that would have. Because he does show a lot of art house movies, and if those movies were to come in, very specific audiences, if those movies were to come in um, pretty much straight away from their introduction uh, in other parts of the world, that would certainly close his window down of availability uh, to get those movies shown uh, at his uh, cinemas. Uh, and of course, uh, there are other big multiplex um, uh, uh, cinema operators around the country who I'm sure would have uh, uh, loved to have had a bit more time to consider this bill. Um, I think most of them, I think uh, the regulatory impact statement, which isn't redacted, which is a change from this government, uh, around 57% I think it says uh, of those operators uh, have gone from the old film technology uh, into uh, the uh, digital technology and showing their films, which is a big change uh, from the time when Trevor Mallard started, started going to uh, the movies. Um, uh, I just did want to go back to that, what, that one part of the process um, which has been mentioned earlier uh, during this debate, and that is the fact that, and if people are watching uh, Parliament TV tonight as a form of entertainment as opposed to watching a movie, um, credit to you, but the fact that we were only given one minute <laughs> uh, to have a look at this uh, piece of legislation, I think... That's why you do have to be uh, careful about the process later on. Uh, and because we had such a short period of time to be able to mull over what we thought about this bill, we should have the standard amount of time to look at this bill through the select committee process. Because if someone who wanted to come and submit to the select committee uh, went through to the, uh, the hand, uh, to the parliamentary website and looked at the hand sides to get some more information about what this bill is about, well, you might not get as much information as you wanted to because on this side of the House we didn't have enough time to think about uh, the legislation because we only got 60 seconds to think about what, uh, some of the ins and outs of it. Uh, thankfully though, uh, we have had plenty of opportunities uh, to talk about um, this bill uh, through this referral motion. This bill could have been treated a different way. Um, as has been mentioned, there could have been a much better collaboration process if, uh, as per usual, uh, the Minister could have given us a confidential copy of the uh, bill much earlier, uh, and then this bill may not have had to have been put through this urgency process. And as many speakers on this side of the House said, uh, we would not have created such a fuss over this, um, because it would have been uh, what we would uh, understand to be a, a normal process where, Mr Speaker, uh, we would have had the time to mull over the details of the bill and then give a considered approach to it. And also, uh, I don't think we would have had to have had uh, a change in the, um, in the time that the select committee can give this uh, scrutiny. As I said, uh, we hope some of those local um, uh, film cinema operators uh, can come along and, and give their, um, their opinions about this. Uh, many people uh, during this debate have given their um, first and favourite movie options. Uh, first movie for me, unfortunately, um, to be putting on the handset was Smurfs and the Magic Flute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also favourite movie would be Crimson Tide. But we, as, as I'd just like to reiterate, just to, to finish up, um, we do oppose this motion for the fact that the process has been dodgy from the beginning uh, since this legislation has been put forward to the House. Uh, the public and the industry should have the full um, uh, time available to them to make submissions. Uh, and if the government can just take the warning uh, from this side of the House that, you know, if you, if you did it collaboratively, then we would not be doing uh, this uh, through such a roughshod process. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Dr David Clark. Speaker. Uh, it, at the start of my uh, contribution this time, I, I wanted...